Hey everybody, it's Dr. Jockers, and today I'm talking about dry fasting. What is a dry fast? It's when we fast without drinking water, and there's a hard dry fast and a soft dry fast. So a hard dry fast would be no exposure to water, so you wouldn't even take a shower or brush your teeth, whereas a soft dry fast would mean you're just not drinking water. So there are certain benefits to this, and I'm gonna go through exactly how to do it right, how to set yourself up for success, and why you would do it. So a lot of people will think really a, a dry fast is extreme, and as a doctor, I would say the same. I would say that certainly it can be an extreme thing. However, people have been doing it for quite a long time. Every major religion has some form of dry fasting. For example, in Christianity, a lot of people will dry fast for periods of time, whether it's like a day or um, you know, just a, a certain period of time during the day, during Lent, and also during Advent. Uh, in Judaism, they do it once a year for Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, where there's basically like a 24-hour dry fast, no water, no food. Um, in Islam, they do it during Ramadan. So Ramadan would be a dry fast from sunrise to sunset on a regular basis. So roughly, you're thinking there like a 12 hours or so. Um, dry fast. Mormonism, a lot of people in Mormonism will dry fast one Sunday each month. And then many Eastern religions will use dry fasting as a kind of a tool to help aid their meditation. And so dry fasting is said to actually stimulate autophagy where the body breaks down these older damaged cellular organelles up to three times uh, more efficiently. Why? Because the body needs water. So all metabolic activity is dependent upon water. And so the body will try to get water some way. So when water volume goes down, it will actually stimulate greater levels of autophagy to pull water out of the cell. So in our cells, we have water. It's going to try to pull some of that water out of the cells, which will stimulate more of this uh, repair mechanism, this, this ability to break down these older cellular organelles and rebuild them. So if we're looking for maximal autophagy, dry fasting can get us more autophagy in a shorter period of time. Other benefits, it's gonna help reduce inflammation, it can improve brain function because we'll break down, well, number one, we'll shut down the neuroinflammasome. So this, uh, this, this uh, genetic pathway that amplifies inflammation in the brain, that can get shut down through dry fasting can help balance your cholesterol and triglycerides, improve your blood pressure, blood sugar, improve your cardiovascular health, just the, uh, the ability of the, the, um, the tissues, the endothelial lining of the blood vessels to function better, can protect your bone health, and of course, with keeping your blood sugar and your insulin down, which is what happens when we fast, whether it's a water fast or a dry fast, it's gonna help prevent diabetes. But the main reason why somebody may want to dry fast would be this enhanced level of autophagy. Um, however, I don't recommend everybody dry fast. And certainly, you know, there are some parameters. So how long can you dry fast? You know, in general, as a doctor, I would say 16 to 24 hours is a really good range to shoot for. Um, if you're going to do it for more than a day, it's ideal that you have some sort of medical supervision, okay, or you're being extremely careful. I know there's probably going to be a lot of people that are commenting on this YouTube page that have done it from far more than 24 hours. A lot of people do, but again, it can be dangerous. Your blood volume can go down quite a bit. You can get severely, um, you know, you're basically your, your, your blood pressure, your uh, hypovolemic, it would be the, the term where your blood pressure just drops too low and you could pass out, right? Because you're losing all this water volume. So certainly possible that could happen for certain individuals. Other individuals can dry fast and sure it's uncomfortable, but they can, you know, push through and, and, and get the results. Now, I only recommend dry fasting if you've had a great experience with intermittent and extended fast first. So before you would start dry fasting, it's ideal that you were doing regular intermittent fasting. Okay, now a lot of people in those religious traditions don't do that. So a lot of people, you know, they're eating a standard diet and then they go right into Yom Kippur, for example, for religious reasons, and uh, they do a 24 hour dry fast. But, you know, it's going to be a lot harder and uh, you're going to suffer more if you do that. And there's higher risk when you do that. It's much better to get your body fat adapted through intermittent fasting 
and have a successful three to five day, let's say, water fast before you would um, try to do some sort of a, you know, a longer dry fast. So I think that's a really good advice as far as that goes. Who should not fast? Um, anybody that's ha had a history of eating disorders, okay? Pregnant women and newborns, young children, people with type 1 diabetes where they have an autoimmune disease and they can't produce uh, insulin, that can be a, a danger. Extreme athletes who are in season, not a good idea. Individuals who are on certain medications and individuals who are severely underweight. Or if you've had a bad experience with water fasting, I wouldn't recommend you know, just jumping right into a dry fast. You'd want to get your body fat adapted and um, adapted to fasting right? Metabolic, more metabolically flexible to where you're good with water fasting. And then, you know, the next step would be attempting a dry fast, you know, a 12 hour dry fast. You can then move up to a 16 and a 24 hour dry fast. Now here are the stages. Number one, you become fat adapted. Okay. So again, following some sort of like a ketogenic diet for a few weeks before you start Fasting and also doing intermittent fasting will help you become fat adapted where you're dropping your meals down to once or twice a day and making sure you're eating a lot of healthy fats, lower carbohydrate, uh, moderate protein, and higher fat diet uh, will teach your body to burn fat for fuel and that will help you become more metabolically flexible. And then number two, you obviously go through a water fast, a three to five day water fast. You have a successful fast, meaning that you were able to carry it out. You didn't have like severe symptoms or get rushed to the hospital. You were able to carry it out. And you may have had some uncomfortable periods of time, but you carried it out successfully. You were able to break the fast successfully and get back to your lifestyle. Step three, you want proper preparation for your fast. You want to create a, you know, a low stress environment. You want to create, um, you know, you want to just set yourself up for success, right? Make sure you're, you're fat adapted. Um, you know, you're not necessarily going to be having to work around the kitchen a lot, uh, being exposed to a lot of water and food. It's always a good idea. So uh, prepare yourself properly. Also, I recommend cutting off alcohol and caffeine, ideally, certainly a day before and ideally more like three, three days to a week before you do the dry fast. So you don't have the addiction or the withdrawal symptoms when you're doing this. And then you start out with a 16 hour dry fast. And of course, you know, if you're successful with that, you can bump it up to a 24 hour dry fast um, and possibly beyond, depending on, you know, if you've got some sort of medical supervision or you're really watching yourself closely. Okay. So that's always important to understand. And dry fasting, you know, when I first heard about it, I thought it was quite extreme. Um, however, you think about animals in nature, and if they break a bone or get severely injured, they, obviously, you know, laying on the ground are subject to predators, but barring that predators don't come upon them and they're not eaten, uh, they will oftentimes re, I mean, they, they can literally regrow their bones in roughly seven to 10 days. So what normally takes us six weeks to heal a broken bone, they can heal in seven to 10 days. And this, they have to heal quickly to save their lives. Otherwise, the insects and you know, everything that starts to break down decaying matter will, 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 will get them. And so they heal very quickly. And of course, they're dry fasting because they can't get to water or food. And so dry fasting can really speed up healing. But again, there are dangers that, that can be evolved with it. So be sure you're being careful as you go about it. Um, if you want more information on this topic, I've got a great article linked below. So check that out. Read the article. It will help give you kind of a step-by-step -step guide for how to do this successfully. And if you have dry fasted successfully, go ahead and leave a comment on this. Or if that's something that you're interested in, leave a comment uh, below. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so you get all my latest updates on immune boosting, fasting, ketogenic diet, and really living the abundant life and optimizing your health. So thanks guys. Look forward to reading your comments and uh, we'll see, see you guys on a future online training.